I'm gonna just start my morning announcements. Um, morning announcements. Uh, first off, happy birthday to Mason. Uh, with his son just turned four, three, three, just turned three. So yeah, yeah. Uh, second update. Um, we're gonna talk about acuity, and acuity is kind of gonna be like the the background of everything Sanchez is gonna go over today. So it's acuityscheduling.com. And what it is, it's an online calendar that integrates into your phone calendar, whatever calendar you choose to go with. And you can put hours and it's just like your go-to place. So when you do have everything set up and you say book a consultation, you're going to say, here's my link or here's my QR code or put the link in your bio and it'll all go to your acuity scheduling site where you can schedule your presentations. So second step into your seller's presentation and remember this is going to be emailed to you um once you've learned all about your subjects um, property you want to learn about the community the nearest Publix, the nearest target i find that knowing this information helps you present it to buyers right um so when you're having your open house presentation that is so important because me as a seller's agent i would think I, I don't I don't know what the nearest target is, but that that question, where's the nearest public, where's the nearest targets, how's the schools in the area, that comes up so much with buyers. And if you're going to host an open house, you want to make sure that you are very savvy on this, mm -hmm. um, making sure that you know all of these questions. Did everybody watch Selling Sunset? I did. I get the I, I get uh, the point. I get it. Like if you're gonna sell in the area, it's ideal to show them that I know the area as one of why me points. Right. Like, Even if you don't sure. live there. Yeah. When I was doing door knocking, I would go with Zion sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right. So I went like three times with Zion on her scooter or on her bike, because one, it makes me look like a resident. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, two, it kind of like took away the whole heat of door knocking because Zion is getting to play. Neighbors get to talk to me if they're because I'm going after work. I'm going like five o'clock, six o'clock when people are coming home from work, walking their dogs, watering their plants, especially during the summertime, springtime. A lot of people in those areas, homeowners are outside. Mm -hmm. So if Zion is walking her bike, you know, riding her bike, I have cars in my pocket or whatever the case is, it takes off that nervousness of door knocking. It also makes me look like I'm familiar with the neighborhood. And so that's why as a seller agent, and I'm only, I'm door knocking in neighborhoods that people are selling. I'm not door knocking for buyers, right? Let's be yeah. real. When we door knock, we're door knocking for sellers. So you want to make sure that you know the community. Um, and when you're searching for sellers, you're actually at the Publix, you're at the Target. You're, um, if you drive through, if you have any elementary school kids, you drive through, you see that there's now realtors that put their flyers or whatever on the school fence. So as you're driving through, you see those realtor signs, those people are targeting sellers, right? That are sometimes in turn buyers if they're buying in um, the same city or same state. Um, so learning about the community. So when I say farm area, that's something that we got to work on, right? Is like figuring out what area you want to be an expert in. Um, for me, it was Miramar, everything east. I mean, everything west of university, um, and that's only because that's where I was at most of the time anyway, right? It wasn't for any reason. Did I sell any houses east, I mean, west of University of Miramar? No, but that was my farm area. Yeah. It just turned out that like sun Sunrise was a popping community at the time when I was active and everybody wanted Sunrise or everybody in Sunrise wanted to sell or downsize before the market shifted. Um, actually, no, I did sell one in Raintree. Raintree? I did do Raintree. Never I think mind. I I see huh? what oh what one thing to do what I learned in like picking a farm area is on the MLS there's a way to see the stats and you can look at geographically uh what area number one has the biggest average price per home and number two does the most sales per month so right. if you, you want to go somewhere active you don't want to go somewhere where like houses aren't moving unless right. you have a buyer for that area then you can kind of reach out to everyone and send everyone a letter and say I have a buyer for this area is anyone thinking of selling and then boom. right put it together then right. and there, on spot. Um, so I, and, and everybody on here, I'm assuming that wants to be seller, being a seller agent is so, it's such a, like a hard niche to be in. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, the type of people that call themselves seller agents, to be honest, don't look like us. Yeah. Right. Um, they just pride <laughs> themselves. Like I don't do buyers. I pass my buyers on. 
right? I only, they don't, I don't see any of us that just primarily do sellers, right? Yeah. Even in new construction, I'm literally the only, and I think there's a new black girl, or I think there's an older black girl that works with Lenar that some people keep mentioning her to me. Cause for some reason I had like three people say, oh, you look like that other girl down South. And I doubt <laughs> that I look like her, but I think I'm black. So I think that's yeah. what it is. I got to meet her. I got to run in the parlor. Mm-hmm. So, um, ouch, ouch. yeah, seller's agents is a hard market to tap into. So you really have to want it. You really have to. And this one is a really good one for Aisha because Aisha doesn't have the time to drive around with buyers to do all of the buyer work, mm-hmm. especially in this market. Aisha, you just want to just be able to put the house on the market and still get your three, four percent, whatever your broker charge. Right. So one, learning the community, learning the top five rest, um, restaurants that family would like in that community. These things are very important for buyers. And it's also important to tell your clients that I'm not just trying to sell your house. I'm selling this area because you really, really are. You're less likely to hear the question, how is the area when you're selling Pembroke Pines in Miramar than if you're selling North Lauderdale, Lotta Hill, Opelaka, something mm-hmm. like that? You're like, how's the area? That's a very prominent question that people ask. So you need to have that answer for your seller and for your buyer. How is the area? <laughs> Yeah. And another thing I did on that point is I used to go to different Starbucks or different like places in the area and I would just bring my laptop and I would work out loud in public. So answering phone calls and stuff like that, people would see like, excuse me, are you a realtor? I have a condo I need to sell. And I've gotten actually two listings just working in Starbucks. So it does work. Yes. Working out loud. I really like that. That's yeah. Amazing. Work I out really loud. Like that. Um. Yeah. Also, it looked like you're really important. You got to dress mm-hmm. nice though. So right now, mm-hmm. Errol, you have the haircut. You got the outfit. Pull up at the Starbucks. Starbucks. Take your laptop out and just just take your laptop out. Like, you your what? Have this call, right? I was about to ask if Khalid had any stickers I could stick on my laptop. So when I open, I'm gonna make some stickers. Damn, you know what? I stickers. knew. I knew when you asked that that I'll he was going to be like, I have it for you though. Yeah, I'm gonna get some stickers. I got. I, I did this. So this is like a. I guess I'll do this. And we'll just get multiple of these guys and we'll put them on your laptop. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I, got one of those. I got you. Oh, I got everybody. Arrow got a hat. I, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get everybody their hat because it's just the bald just... head man didn't get a hat yet. You are like the yeah. branding king. Khalid. I try. I really try. You are a brander. Like you would really still branding on anything. Trying oh, Khalid. Yes. I need some of those folders. I gave my um. I you did taxes yesterday, folders? and I gave my tax person yeah. a folder and a card. So. I'm gonna give everybody those folders. a box of folders so y'all can put y'all consultation presentations in them. <laughs> this is gonna be a thing. Nice. Q2. Q2. We need a goodie bag, Lee. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What a day. This is great. I, mean, <laughs> I would really love a Louis Vuitton travel set. <laughs> have to wait. All right, we're gonna do some more competitions. Uh, I get, top producer. <laughs> no, we're, not go we're not gonna go there yet we're not gonna go there yet we're gonna figure right. out i'm gonna figure i'm gonna have a prize system oh i'm having an educational platform built and it has a prize system built in it's so like as you go through a certain amount of classes you gain points and it, you actually win real prizes so i'm excited to make that a real part of this right nice all right so i'm assuming this is an activity we were going to do in person uh arrow <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we all, I'm assuming we're all not homeless. What is your, your go-to? So when you're leaving home, how far are you away from your nearest grocery store, your nearest coffee shop and your nearest dog park? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. I'm sorry, but before y'all answer, that is really, really important because I always tell people you don't want this house because look at the grocery, like it matters what grocery store you shop at. Are you going to go to the president? You know, so a lot of people care. It it really matters. Okay, go ahead. Whoever. Well, I know. Um, I stay in Tamarack, and I actually stay in a pretty awesome area where probably a mile away is the Publix, another mile away there's a, a neighborhood Walmart. Two miles away there's a, a big Walmart. Um, Walgreens, CVS on each corner. Um, we got two schools, maybe within a half a mile, that are A schools. Um, we have dog parks in my neighborhood. We have a dog park in the neighborhood across from my neighborhood. Um, I have a pretty awesome area. I'm in, I'm in a pretty awesome area. I'm going to have everything. Like I can get up right now, go to a Lowe's, go to Home Depot, go to Walmart, go anywhere in, in the midst of two minutes. And you just sold somebody on your neighborhood. You should start there. You just start yes, farming your neighborhood and then grow from there. Like you have that. And then once you have it systemized, then 
expand to another area. Gotcha. You have an awesome farm area. That would be, yeah, that's huge. That's that's no, huge. No like, association. You get a single family house. That's great. I, I love your area. Like I, I don't <laughs> even know where, but <laughs> like, like Publix, Walmart, Lowe's. Like you're two minutes away from everything. Like you literally yeah. can go home, forget onion, and go back to the store and grab the onion. And like some, like that's something with my husband and I. We just realized that we stay so close to like our favorite supermarket both two of them and now they're building like a chick-fil-a right around the corner so mm-hmm. it's so important that like the community itself is very important to both buyers and sellers and so even if this is a com- conversation point for you at your seller's presentation where you kind of already know what's in the area right maybe you're selling a house that you're not too familiar with but you're asking your seller hey what are your top five restaurants like what restaurants do you and your family go to around here um what you know how do you feel about your publics um how do you you know like asking them these questions let them know that you're really hound in on not just selling their home you're 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 selling this is somewhere that they love um they live they grew their family they entertain their friends this is something that's very important to them and so you showing your important like how important it is to you would definitely help you score that listing Mm. right even if you're asking them, what's a core memory that you built in this home? That's so like, you know, in a different market, when, when buyers, I mean, sellers had to compete, um, some sellers were writing letters to the new buyers. Like, listen, we made some really good memories in here. Hopefully you and your family make, this is, it's not as sentimental to us as our paychecks are, but to them, this is a sentimental thing that they're passing on to someone else. They're never going to forget this home that they grew up in. Look at Kanye West. He just don't forget it. You know, like, <laughs> you just don't forget where you grew up. Um, anybody else want to share something about their current neighborhood or their childhood neighborhood that they really liked? Oh, and before that, I'm going to just plug in another interjection. Another good market indicator is business. So whenever you see a lot of like businesses moving into one area, that's a really high indicator that they have a research team for this and they know something about that area. And it's about to start, apartments are gonna come next, then housing is gonna come next. Cause look at the stadium, they just built an apartment community in it. But before that, you saw Starbucks has come around, you saw the Carol Mart get torn down. So just look out for that. Whenever you see construction, that's the area you wanna look into. I just wanna highlight how important it is that the community and knowing about your community that you're farming or the community that you're listing is in um, is very important. Um, Also, because you are going to host an open house, right? Even if you don't need to host an open house because you got so many offers as soon as you put it on the market, you wanna be able to host an open house so you can get buyers. And then having those buyers there with you, um, you wanna show that you know about the community because those buyers might use you to find them another home because you sound that you know exactly what buyers are looking for. Um, So they're very, very introvert um, with each other. I was a door knocker. Um, So I had like hang tags. And then on the front of my hang tag, I had like all my information, like, hey, there's low inventory. I would love to help you sell your house. It was vibrant. It was fun. It was bold. And on the back of it, I had four small businesses that gave me their flight, their logo, and maybe like a coupon. So like a car wash company, a landscaping company, a home delivery service. And I forgot the fourth one. I think it was like an event planner on the back of it. So like they each had like a little segment like this, this big on the back of my door tag. And that's what I had on the front of the door so that they wouldn't throw away my, my door tag. (laughs) So at least there was like a, a landscaping company on there, car wash, stuff that homeowners would use, you know, like a good one now would be like a pressure washing company because it's spring cleaning. A lot of associations ask that they get their their your front cleaned. So a pressure washing company would be good right now. Still a car wash. Driveways. Car wash. Mm-hmm. So um, there's a, like a couple of companies that does, they would clean the... Um, the garbage cans for you they'll come out and you know like the garbage cans they'll come out and like deep clean your garbage can and if i was a, if i was in general right now that's probably something i would offer to sellers like you know here's a 20 20 percent off or 20 dollars off on your your garbage cleaning services or whatever on me um and it probably won't be out of my pocket it will probably be me paying for the door tags and that that company would just offer it to me because obviously they're making money from it 
So the setup, um, when you get to your seller's presentation, you don't want to get there. Like if it's a five o'clock, you don't want to get there at five o'clock. You want to get there like 445. Um, that way you can like analyze the outside of the neighborhood, um, drive through the community, see if there's any other like for sale signs outside. Um, and then like just show that you're punctual. So like making sure you knock on the door, let them know, hey, you know, let them welcome you in. Don't sit outside. Don't stand outside. Invite yourself in, which sounds so bold. Like, hey, can I come in and have a seat? Something like that. Um, always try to do the listen presentation at their house um, just so that you can do like you're an expert at pricing homes. So you can actually walk around and see if there's anything that you should repair or fix before you put the house on the market. Um, and that way, too, you know that, you know, when you're taking your pictures, you know, the lighting you know, how, you know, like things that you want to highlight in the home, making sure that you let them know, like something you can offer as well is that you can offer a landscaping service before you take your listing pictures. Um, so offer a free landscaping service to come out and cut the yard because you want your pictures to look good, but also giving your clients something to make them use you that your competitor competitor might not be giving. Um, yeah, something really affordable like that. I know some, so a lot of people do like the house cleaning services too. So after they move out, you offer to have a cleaning company come in and clean their house for them, for the buyers, or at least cleaning the house that they're transitioning to if you're representing them. So, all right. So the clothes, this is something that is very, very hard for everyone to ask for, no matter how many times I do it. Or I, I think I do it. I don't do it. It's tough. It's easy, but it's hard. It's asking for the clothes. Never leave a listening presentation without asking, hey, are we doing this? Hey, mm. hey we doing this. I want to add, let me tell you how I do that. This, so here's how I do <laughs> yeah. my clothes, right? Because so we know you're just handing out, handing out leads. Yeah. So you got to have Left it. And right. Left <laughs> and right. So I put the contract as the last page of the presentation. So right after the presentation, I'm explaining the contract. So I'm like, oh, did I spell your name right? Let's go over this. Here's the price. You want to do that price? And I write it in front of them. So I, you watching me fill this out. And I'm like, all right, is this right? This right? Okay, if you good with this page, initial right here. And if they initially, I'm going to do the next page. And then I'm going to just keep going until they stop me. And then wherever they stop me, I'm like, okay, so you have an issue with this right here. So let's resolve that issue, resolve it, cross out whatever they don't like initially, and then keep going. And then if they stop you like out the gate, then okay, give them some space, give them some time and figure it out. But that's just how I smooth slot my little clothes in there. Okay, okay, okay. Anybody else? No. Do y'all like that? I like it. I actually do like that. It, it okay. works. It works. But how do you... <laughs> How do you do it? Um, and then, because it, it's only that, like, it has to fit you as a person specifically, you know? So, like, it's not going to work for everybody. So, I guess. Right. For me, I, well, I close the. It's kind of like they come to you uh, wanting to close most of the time, you know? Right. When they come in, I, my closing of the sale is, like, giving them my my lender's information. Because mm. at this point, I, I, I. I sell for the seller, but I, I help the buyer. So yeah, it's kind of a different, a different close, but I so mean, you're like, would you like my lender to call you or to call my lender? And they're like, yes or no. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, um, here's my lender information. Um, when you're done with the application, call me. So I know to follow up with her. I like, I, I assume that they're going to do the application. You give them something um, to do. Mm. Yeah. I assume that they would. I assume everyone is. And if they don't know well <laughs> yeah it's kind of it's kind of like just kind of like at the close forward into the implied assumption and then you just need one action on their half to say yes we're doing yeah. it right. so another simple close that i've used before is like after you're done with your presentation you just say any questions that's a close and if they say no you ain't got no questions on that let's do it here's my contract okay so that's spell your name right all right and you want to do this price okay and you write it you know so just that's how i do it that's it works best I think if I was still a seller, I mean, if I was still looking I'll, for listing, I'll, I would I'll probably definitely it. say like, hey, um, I would definitely, I could see like personality wise, I could see myself saying, I cannot wait to get your home on the market, da, 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 da. And, you know, like, 
I would just assume. Fine, here. Did I say that? Did I, did I say like, name hey, right? like, listen, I can't listen. wait to get this house on the market. Are you ready? Are you excited? Let's do this. When do you want to have this open house? When do you think it's going to be ready? Start scheduling um, stuff. I just, I just go. You just it. go. You just do it. You just in it. That's the best close for me. Just naturally, let's do this. I'm, you got to stop me. I'm assuming we're good. I just, I thought we had something going on right, here. We're you know? friends. So we're this friends. Isn't working? Why would you not let me pick me? Yeah, I don't get it. What? I'm not what gonna do act you like? like you want me? <laughs> yeah. So that's definitely how. I'd let them say. Let them stop you or say no. All right. Another good one is be like, I'll be honored to represent you in your sale of your home. Are you ready to get this process started by signing the listing paperwork today? Doing mm -hmm. it right now. Print it out. Do not docu sign it when you get back to the office or none of that. Like print it out and have them have it. sign it and then you just upload it. Pen and paper makes it very, mm -hmm. very professional. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it makes it solid, you know, like pen and paper for the listing presentation for sure. Now, I don't know, do your brokers require that buyers also sign an agreement? I don't just because like uh, the first issue we're trying to overcome is we realize sometimes you need to fire a buyer. Yeah. So that complicates it a bit. So once we're okay with that, then I feel like we can start doing contracts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, buyers are able to, you know, go with whoever they want to and not not be tied down to just you what if you don't click what if you don't want to keep working with them right because it's, it's better than to force a, a unwanted relationship because then it's just it just something bad comes out yeah not worth it all right so what if the buyer is that what if the seller isn't ready to sell at the time but they just wanted that information and stuff like that um do you you set up an appointment to come back, right? Um, so not all buyers are going to be that. When Kay was like, sign right here, and this right here, not all of them are going to do that. Right. Um, and not all of them are going to say, yeah, let's let's do it. Um, you want to make sure, as I think we mentioned this last time, like forgetting something so you can come back. Um, you don't always have to do that. So you can always also schedule an appointment to come back with them. Okay, so you're not ready to sell right now? I'm mm -hmm. like, it, it, are they gonna lie to you and be like, no, I want to sell right now, but not with you? Or they yeah, be like, some, you know sometimes I'm really like intense. Like I'll really put them on the spot sometimes. Like I'll try to identify what is it in all that you didn't like. Is it the price I'm trying to get? Is it the commission? Do you think I'm too expensive? I asked somebody that. Oh, Arrow, she when she tried to lower our commission, I said we can't do it. I charge seven. You know, like I charge her six. She said that's a lot. I said, but I charge seven. This is six for you. Um, then she said, yeah, but it's still a lot. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. So we can't do it. And then it went into, I, I'm just trying to see like, are we, are we too expensive? I'm just trying to see what the situation is. So I'll put them on the spot with that. Or sometimes I'll put them on the spot and say, you don't think I'm worth it. <laughs> but that's just me. Like it just, I feel like it just flows with my personality. So I guess figure out what works best with you. But Wait, the so one are you thing right now, are you at six or did you have to even go lower than six? No, it's at six. It's at six. Like I flat out say no now. I will not do it. I will not do it under six. Um, just because I'm gonna be unhappy doing it, and I know I'm worth it. Like I'm, it's gonna get sold. Someone's gonna buy it. Um, hey, does it does it help explaining how the breakdown of the um, commission works? They don't care about like telling that. them you you literally will only get three percent once it's split up into to the brokerages. Yeah, but they yeah, still but they seeing you getting a couple thousand dollars. And they don't like it. Right. They don't okay. like it. They want you to get, if in their perfect world, why can't I give you a $500 finder's fee? I don't get it. Correct. No, you but can't make it off of that. <laughs> so all I'll say is whatever it costs to sell this house, I'm paying for it. It's coming out of my pocket. You don't have to worry about anything else. You just say yes or no to the offers I show you. Yeah, they don't and when something goes wrong, I've been there before, so I know what to do in these situations. I'm pretty confident at some point, somebody gonna cut somebody out, and I'm I gotta deal with that. So I I know my worth. I know that there are terrible realtors out there, and you can gladly go work with one of them for five. Oh, that leads me to this one. So Ooh. the if the client is like, hey, we're gonna interview some more agents before we make the decision. This is something that also is really good for me because it's like people always come into my office first and they're like oh we're just gonna look at some other houses before you know it's like hey there's a lot of qualified professionals in your area like there's no doubt like there's mm -hmm. people that are qualified even in my office you know mm -hmm. um, but I'm confident that I got the best plan to sell your home for the most money in the shortest amount of time and if there's anything 
that I know is that I'm going to sell your house with passion. I understand how much you love your home. Um, and we're going to find the right buyers. We're going to find them quick and you're going to get the most for your home in today's market. And I know what the most is. And tell them, you know, about the dog park two miles away and the <laughs> grocery store that, you know, you know, the area like no one else will. All of this is full circle. It's all full circle. Full circle. Tell them about the Starbucks being built. That, or the, the Chick-fil-A. Yeah. All of this. They're like, whoa, you know all that? The other people ain't telling me about none of that. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, the main idea of that not. is they just want to see you can confidently talk about something because that's literally you showing how well you can sell something. Your right. ability to explain like just it. be confident about it. Like be confident in what's coming up, even if you have to do your own research. Of course, you're not, I am not a commercial realtor. So how would I know, Gerard? Right. How would I know that there was a triple layer or not? The sign. But <laughs> um <laughs> But or you can, you can go deeper and look into the permit record search. Some, some people like do that. They'll check the permit records to see what companies apply for permits in the area just to get even further ahead of the game and know what areas are going to be popping. So I didn't even know that was a thing. So that's something that, that's another, another, another talking point that y'all can tell these people. Oh, and also another talking point. is Did you know that when the little crane is up in the air building something, that building is already halfway sold out? They're not allowed to break ground until they've sold a certain percentage of units in the building. Sanchez will probably verify that because she builds houses. I would I was actually just about to verify that yesterday I actually had to tell people that like I can't sell a home without a permit. So and I can't sell a permit if I don't have enough homes planned mm -hmm. out. So planned out. yeah, yeah like it, it it is really behind the scenes. It's not it's not easy with you know new construction and getting permits cleared and stuff like that. And you would think that the city loves Lennar and builders. No they don't half the time yeah. they don't new dairy right yeah. i mean now i'm tired of seeing apartments come up in Myanmar, and i'm a resident of Myanmar. i'm like if y'all build one more apartment you're gonna see them building more apartments than houses out here now just because yeah, that's where the market's it's a going. Record market people are investing into it because businesses are coming and then their employees need places to go so now they're gonna put their money into rental apartments that's where disney's building apartments that's crazy disney Lenar is tapping Lenar's, into more apartments yeah. now right that's because i'm like Kay sent me and i knew that because Lenar does have a uh multifamily um sector but they're now they're taking it into a bigger a bigger level that would be our ideal clients here people who want to build or grow their in, uh income property portfolio just because that's where the market's going so we can guide them there and then if we catch them now they'll be buying like 20 unit buildings in a couple years with us so and i don't know why y'all haven't come to my office yet i haven't seen any of y'all in here yeah. bringing the investors but yeah. i'm you know like yeah, hello you can bring investors to oh yeah because y'all don't have rental restrictions we do not have rental restrictions you can not have right rental restrictions. we need to raise awareness of that yes yes so arrow if you can it's swing by lenar and just you know Take some videos yeah, I about. I ain't got nothing. Uh, really, no, I ain't got no. Oh, wait, not today. Y'all see, I'm I'm on vacation. Yeah. Okay. Not today. <laughs> not today. So we got to set an appointment. <laughs> Let's just do it around the around the the twenty second. There's any questions, any rebuttals, any missed points? Okay, you missed a lot when you were over here talking to superstars. Yeah. But anything. <laughs> mm, no, oh, I wasn't. You sent the um your presentation you missed that so my seller i don't have a seller's presentation i do have one that i can send you it's not mine yeah okay so yeah so i'll work on that with everybody well then we'll... i have my buyer's presentation that's mine that i will customize for everyone but i'm going to email it to you when we get off this zoom call so you could compare and compare contrast that one okay. but i was saying for my seller's presentation i never had one because i was never looking to be a seller's agent mm -hmm. um i was still new but i had very killer door tags that i yeah, would have so send I everything had on the front of my door tag, it was all me, like my information. And on the back, I had four businesses like like this big on the back. I had like a car wash company, a landscaping mm -hmm. company, a, a Yasmin at the time had a, some kind of company she added on there, but it ain't matter. And yeah. then another company on there. And so that way they didn't throw away my door tags. But I was useful. saying on that, like there's so many other businesses, like a pressure washing company now because spring break is you know, spring is here, spring cleaning, a lot of HOA acts that they clean and power wash their front yard and sidewalks. If you even give like a 10% off and then you reach out to the, the company yourself and be like, hey, if do you want to do 10% off and I put you on door tags and put you on 500 homes? 
they're gonna be like heck yeah because i'm not doing it so i always right. take that um during the summertime i plan on hiring um maybe like a 16 to 16 year olds paid them ten dollars an hour to put out my door tax for me um because that's probably gonna cost me uh hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, and I'd probably get like five hundred door tags out, and I wouldn't have to be in the hot sun, and mm-hmm. I'm not knocking on the doors anyway. But yeah, stuff like you know, different things to do. But I'm gonna send over that. I'm I'm gonna send over the seller's presentation because I really like it, but it's not mine, and I'll, obviously I can customize it for you. Um, and then, but after we take our pictures. Okay, wait. You go customize it after we take our pictures. Yeah, I said if anybody have pictures that they're confident with now and they need I it see. for the week, I can put I can just you know put it on there. But if you want to wait till you have your new pictures, then just I'll wait. Okay, so what we'll do from here is everybody book a one on one with me, and then through this week leading up to that, I'll one on one with you like help build your own unique uh, presentations. I guess we'll do like a screen share, and I watch your screen as you make it, and you know we'll go through how to explain it page by page. And then we'll come back with Sanchez with the pictures. Well, and I don't we'll, mind being on that one on one. Okay, so it'll be a uh, uh, one on two, and then we will all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to refer to it now. It, it'll be a, it'll be a three way zoom. It'll be a three way zoom, and we will collectively work on them individually, and just you know we'll you go through how to explain it. Now. Does anybody want to do their presentation tomorrow? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I can do them all. So what we could do is like, we can, I think this is pretty standard, but we can change it. Of course, we could change this to your color that you want, right? If you wanted a different color. Yeah. Um, And everybody's on the Canva. So that works. Right. So if you want to do that, and then like, if you're comfortable with the first step being for buyers, the first step is, you know, getting pre-approved. Um, previewing homes and then write in an offer um, and negotiate price, which I need to take out because you ain't negotiating no prices in this market. Yeah, it's different. We'll, we'll word it, whatever, honestly, whatever you personally want to say at these points, we'll just put whatever you want, then we'll just make sense of it together. That's what we'll do. Right. It should be and a we- quick thing because it's going to be the same template. We're like, I guess we're going to merge our templates because I right. sent a seller's I, presentation I and this is a buyer's presentation. So I say take Sanchez's buyer's presentation and my seller's presentation. And you, you show me your presentation. seller's presentation right quick, okay? Yeah. Y'all can see this? Yeah. Okay. So what I did was I would print this and put it in like a one of those presentation folders that with plastic on each side and give it to him like a book. Um, so right here, you know, you just change this, my name or your name, put sales associate, your email address and phone number. Um, this part right here, not necessary. You're not going to put this property manager certificate certification. I just put that there just because I was a property manager at the time. Um, you could put whatever designations you have or want here and change the color of this, obviously. Um, change this to your seller's names. This is your name. This right here, it's just a thank you letter. I don't read this. I just show it to them. All right. A uh, little information about the pro- the company, right? But I would change this to about Arrow Eugene or about you. You can either leave it as about the company until you figure out what to say about yourself, but you can alter this page to say whatever you want to say about you. I would um, say leave that page and also do it about you because you're the, the company is who's selling the house. That's true. That's true. So you can also revive, like, however, there's no rules here as long as it's legal. Um, marketing, just some fun facts about marketing. I'm not going over this either. I just like, I just show it to them. Here you go. Right here is what I go through. I just say, here's what I'm going to do. Um, the first thing I show is that I'm not taking pictures with my phone. I have a real camera and then I show up with this thing and it just looks like, oh damn, he takes this serious. Can I see me? I don't know if I can see me. Um, but I showed y'all the camera just for dramatics. Yeah, um, Right here, some little key market factors. Honestly, the price is really the biggest thing. If it's not selling, it's too expensive. That's probably the biggest factor um, that they're going to run into. But I just, you know, let them know. You can change this. And then in summary, to let them know, this is over. I'm done, right? And then I go into my marketing plan of action, which really doesn't go like this, but it just says, here's my plan. I have a whole month of work, you know, planned out. Don't think I'm just sitting here not doing nothing. I'm doing all of this. Um, and right here is the first page of the listing agreement. And I say, did I spell your name right? 
Okay. And uh, you're good with this price right here? This is the price we agreed on? Let's fill it in. And then I'll just keep going until they stop me. But first, I'll ask any questions. Any questions on any of that? And a no to any questions is a yes to let's do this in my mind. Because I feel like if you had a problem, you would ask me a question, right? Yes. I like your presentation. Could you email it to me really quick? Yeah, sure. All right. But I think what everybody should probably do today is check out acuityscheduling.com and set up your calendars. And then you can put in your availability, your hours. Um, there's a free version. So start with a free version and go from there. Anyone here full time? I would say, Hi. yeah. Fuller? Yeah. Hi. They full time. That's all. So like, need. listen. This is, we, we got to be so serious. It's Q2. Let me tell you, Q2, we got to be so serious about lead generating, people coaching, um, and getting, putting ourselves out there because this is what's going to pay our bills. Now it's going to pay our bills then, right? Um, so we really got to get on it. We got to, we got to kill it. Yeah. We got to be out here really it's killing consistency. it. consistency. It's just once you agree you're going to start doing something, you have to do it for at least a few months to see if it's going to work or not. That's the mm. thing. So end up, wrap up our thing um, is that we are going to do the seller's presentation because I never had one and Kay just provided one for us. Mm -hmm. um, any plan, anybody plan on doing any door knocking this spring? I've done it once. Another thing you could do is on IMAP, we have a software called IMAP through the MLS. And um, in that, you can search for a certain demographic that you want. Like you can search between people who bought their homes in a certain time frame, a certain time frame, and people who own homes that's worth whatever, any demographic you want. And it'll give you the mailing address to the owners. And you could just mail them something every month. But to do it that way, you'd have to consent to mail to the same people every month for at least like three months or six months to see if it's going to work. Cause they're not just going to get a letter and sell their house right away. They need to get it a few times and be like, Oh wow. It's her again. I know her. It's like, it's like the Patty, the silver effect. You just know who she is and know she sells houses in this area because she's drilled it for so long. She's become part of your life. Yeah. Uh -huh. instead, of, instead of emailing to the whole community, you just focus in on those key people on a certain people age. People you believe are most are likely. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you just keep hitting them over and over. And it's just, it takes repetition. Why, why do we sign up for this? TV, people seeing selling, selling Sunset and all that crap, thinking it's easy. <laughs> they can just go come up in here and, and, and show Whenever I see somebody it. announce that they're realtor now, I'm like. Yeah. Y'all, it's not what it's on TV. We got to mm. work. We got to work hard. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. And definitely switch your content to like start documenting, not creating. So instead of trying to like create actual like creative artsy content, just document your journey. Document, I just learned this today and here's why that's important to know. And I think you guys should know. Or I'm showing this house to this person in this situation because this, this, and this. And I think this house is going to work because. So that would be the difference between documenting and it's more entertaining and more, it's like more like reality TV. It's like a day in the life. And that's what people want to see. I got to learn how to get out of my own way, though, because I feel like <clears throat> I like to live in the moment. So, like, I don't really think about it. Hey, let me get my phone and, and start recording this. Or I don't want to seem unprofessional as I'm walking through a house and recording um, yes. something while I'm with somebody. So I kind of, I mean, my is. content is, that's why my content is so low when it comes to some such things like that, because I like to live in the moment and not, I don't want them to think that I'm focused more so on social media or doing something for social media than I am helping them. That yeah, makes sense. I, I get that. And that's one thing I try to not do is like record in front of them. But that's why like at the showings, I give them space. I'll let them go in this room and I'm on this side of the house and I'll record something real quick. Not to post it now, but just to have it in my phone as like part of my content bank. And days later, I can post it. Yeah. No one's going to know. It's just they just need to see that you're doing stuff. Because if they don't see you doing anything, they assume you're doing nothing. Got you. Just that's for feedback. Is. Could I be here? Y'all can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Just for feedback, what what do you think we should work on next? Have you been learning anything or building any sort of like confidence or understanding through the lessons for the classes? Me? No, everybody else. Oh, that makes, <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, I think the only the one thing that my my brain keeps clicking on is um, I kind of want to. I mean, what you guys are, are slowly helping us with is pretty much brand who I am. And how to put myself out there because I'm not like a I'm not a type of person that likes to be 
in, in the forefront. So I need to get out of that out of that uh, box um, so that I can, you know, have my face plastered everywhere or be speaking somewhere a lot or being be in the place to be pretty much. Um, I think that's just really what it is for me. Figure right. out what works best for you, because maybe it's like if it's your face you don't want in the forefront, you don't have to do that. You could just go be text only, just type out stories, just blog your experience. And it'll be for the community that likes reading instead of looking at pictures or watching videos. There's, there's a community for everything. Even gotcha. if in your videos, you don't have to be in them. Just post the videos of just the rear facing camera, whatever. It, it, people just need to know you're doing something. And this is how you're showing them you're doing something about just documenting what you're doing. It's interesting to them, even though it's like new to you. It's brand, brand new to everybody else. So now we know it's important to show them that you know the community, even though you're not from there, even if you don't live there, just little th things to talk about. Like, oh, I noticed that crane there. That means they're halfway sold out. Oh, I noticed that they're building a Starbucks. Here. That's an indication of the market's going to rise. So all of these are things that I can show the buyer and explain to them why I feel we should get more for this house than the next. That's what they want to hear. Um, yes, the comps, the sold is only up to this price, but there's absolutely nothing on the market like it. If you wanted to buy a two bedroom condo like this, you'd have to spend at least 250. So as a result, we can raise our price a little bit higher. That's just how the market works. You just want to show them, I know how the market works. I know how this area works. And I know how selling this house works. You clearly, you just said you didn't have any other questions because I just explained everything. So let's do this. And that's, that's, that's our spiel. Yeah. And remember, don't be hard on yourselves. Yeah. Don't be hard on yourselves. Um, sellers are naturally harder to secure, to even get. And a seller's appointment That's is a big deal. Um, and so <laughs> it, it will come. You will manifest it. You will work towards it. Um, everything that you do will will be aligned with you getting your, your listings up. So, And the first one might okay. suck. And that's okay. My first listing appointment went horribly. That, that's just how it goes. You, you just have to remember, I didn't have the listing before I came in here. So you didn't lose it. You just didn't get it that is. one. Just try again. <laughs> you just know, okay, so that went horribly. I know not to say that crap no more. And then you just keep switching out different parts and you learn okay, I get the same objection every time. So when I get that objection, I'm going to swap out my response to it until it starts working. And that is how you get better. That's the work of this. That's the hustle part. All right. All I'm right, y'all. So I, tomorrow at three arrow, I'll be on. Yes. So tomorrow at three. Um, so I guess from today to tomorrow, uh, me and Sancho just send each other each other's listing thingies, uh, presentations, yeah. and then we'll work on that. Y'all, y'all got mine, right? I sent mine to everybody. Let's work on doing maybe a live together that'll get you out there. Um, if we can do a live together about how to invest in new construction, that can work. It's the little things. It's just it's just exposure. Exposure is just getting attention. So any little thing, even if you're riding a freaking bike and just post, I'm riding my bike through this neighborhood. Huh. <laughs> just take any little post and just flip it into marketing. That's what marketing is. It doesn't have to be work wise. It can be I'm drag racing against this pickup truck, and don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> but it's just like, like if you watch like Derek Grace or the other like big marketers who have their own business to market on social media, you see what they're doing. Like Derek Grace, he's over there holding like two machine guns just because it's getting your attention. And while you're looking at him, he's telling you buy my platform. It's all about just getting attention. That's what you want to do. And when you got their attention, tell them something of value to show that you're working and you are doing something. And then once you have their attention and their interest, get them to book a consultation. And then that's where that's where it's your job to explain how good you are and reel them in. Makes sense. That's the system. That's the system. That's the system. All right. Um, I'm not gonna hold y'all all day. I, I I think I said all I had to say. Uh, Sanchez, anything else you want to add before we? Nope. So, Arrow, I mean, Willard, let me know whenever you're ready to go live and see you tomorrow, Arrow. All right. Oh, and sure. if you want to like practice going live, you could go live on Clubhouse because it's just less invasive if it's your face that you have an issue with. And then once that goes well, <laughs> then do Instagram. Damn. Yeah, he did. Ugly. Get, yeah, it ain't like it ain't my face. It ain't my face. Like I, just, <laughs> I get it. I get it. That's all. It ain't my face. I, I like. Face. Oh, sorry. I, I get don't it. Your face looks bad, Willer, but dang. I got. I'm sorry. I'm gonna give you a hat. Maybe that's what. Maybe when you get your hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the hat. Go live yeah. with the hat. 
and then the hat is like, look at this. Miller, several times people on Facebook will tag both of us when somebody's like, hey, I'm looking for a realtor. I've been tagged several times with Willard. So that's yeah, it. I know. That's I, good. I see you. Everything, yeah, really it does. Every time I see my name, it's St. Trevor's right name right above my. And that's how many people know y'all do real estate. So that's what it's all about. Get people to know. Like they don't know you do real estate, so they don't know to tag you. If they know you do real estate, they will know to tag you. That's that's oh. what you want. Oh, sure. All right, y'all. Well, I'll see you. Oh, and if anybody drink bangs, the radical stadato is nasty. It <laughs> tastes like sprinkles and red icing. Get them goodie bags ready, man. I got you. I'm a, I'm a, you talk about goodie bags to so like after the appointments, you could like give it to your clients and stuff. No, no, right? no. I mean, our goodie bags with our hats and our logo. Oh, for y'all. That makes trucks, sense. Hats, you know. sticker. If, you swag know, bags. Like, yeah, swag bags. Yeah, swag bags. I'm going to make some swag bags. Okay. You know. Great idea. Wonderful. I'm excited. <laughs> Swipe bags coming soon. <laughs> All right, y'all. Oh, I can also swag bag. I got this. I got this. Swag bags on me coming up. I'm going to try to have them by the photo shoot. That would make sense because I can just give it to you while I'm in front of you. And all right. Great. This went well. Go team. <laughs>